As Dragon Ball Z fans, there comes a time to ask the question to either yourself or a close friend, maybe even an internet source, is this canon? And that's to be expected, not everything always makes sense. Even the original mangas kind of, you know, dropped the ball sometimes when it came to its own canon. But that's fine, that's the point of this video. The idea that canon in general, not just in Dragon Ball Z, but as fans of any show, movie, television, comic book, you name it, we're free to choose our own canon. So long as we understand and respect the original canon that the creators made, as long as they're giving us so much content, I think that it's fine just to sit around and think that one thing or another makes sense in a certain continuity or not. And in saying that, I want to take this video to kind of explain the way that I watch Dragon Ball. And not, it might not be the way that you watch Dragon Ball or anyone thinks. There are people out there who might have a huge problem with the way I do this, but that's fine. As a fan, I'm allowed to choose. So before we waste too much time, I'm going to just kind of get right into it. I start off simple enough by watching the television special Bardock the Father of Goku. If you're feeling really frisky, you can watch the episode of Bardock, but I'm not going to get into any of that right now. Then we're going to move on to the original 153 episodes of Dragon Ball. It isn't until we reach the end of Dragon Ball which things get a little different. And before I get started on this, I want to preface this again that I understand that there are inconsistencies in all the Dragon Ball movies, but I still watch them anyway and I overlook certain things. I don't use all of them, but I use the ones that I particularly like, particularly like and I think that they make sense in a certain context if watched with an open mind. So we're going to jump directly from Dragon Ball into the Dead Zone. And the only reason I include this is because of the whole Garlic Jr. subplot. But I think it still makes sense because Goku and Piccolo are still fighting at this time. No one really understands Goku, Gohan's powers. And it doesn't necessarily hinder what's to come when Raditz appears. But there are some slight inconsistencies with Krillin actually having met Gohan, people actually having acknowledged him be before the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, but that can be overlooked. The next jump between series and TV specials is pretty self-explanatory. In between episodes 117 and 118, I watched the history of Trunks in order to understand who Trunks is before he actually appears in the series. The next jump is a bit more complicated. In between episodes 169 and 170, I watch Brawly the Legendary Super Saiyan. Now, I covered this in my last video with Brawly being a really interesting antagonist, but it's also because I really like this film and I feel like his introduction can fit kind of nicely into the 10 day gap in between the Cell games. Now, there's a little inconsistencies here and there with the fact that no one's freaking out in the movie and Gohan and Goku aren't in their Super Saiyan forms the whole time, but I can, that can be over. The next change is that in between episodes 194 and 195, you watch Bojack and Family. And the reason because is the Bojack movie doesn't really interfere with any of the rest of the story. In between episodes 194 and 195 is t going from Gohan into the, oh, the, the other world tournament. And it's understandable that in between that time, Hercule might have held, Hercule might have held a tournament, people might have come, Goku, Gohan saved the day again. It's easy enough. There are slight inconsistencies here and there with actually Trunks being back and all that stuff, but it can be overlooked. Another one of the cool things about this movie is that we get a couple great fight scenes from Tien and Yangcha. They actually get some screen time to fight, and it kind of serves as a way to see how Vegeta actually got back into fighting after swearing, swearing it off at the end of the Cell game. So that's actually kind of cool. Next, in between episodes 207 and 208, we watch Brawly the Second Coming. Again, I enjoy the Brawly movies, I think they're fun. We get to see a little bit more than just a Goku story fighting an antagonist with everyone else getting beaten up in between. I feel like this movie can make sense and take place right before the World Tournament. Now there's some inconsistencies like why didn't Vegeta come, why didn't Piccolo come to help? But again, all these things can be overlooked. It's fun to think about Brawly as a real antagonist into the show, and I I appreciate watching it in terms of the real continuity, or at least my continuity. The next one is, I think, probably one of the hardest to understand for a lot of people. I don't think anyone else would think of it this way but me. But actually, I would take the episode 287 and cut it in half. This episode deals with the 
use of the Dragon Balls, wishing for the memory of Majin Buu to be erased from all human beings because of all the things that happened. Now, this episode implies a six month time six month time gap, but in between that, I feel like Bio Brawly is something that can actually make sense to have happened in that time. Now, there's a lot of inconsistencies there, like why wouldn't Trunks and Goten fuse? Why is Goku dead at the end of the movie? The list goes on. No one else helped besides those three, but like I said in my other video, the the Bio Brawly movies, all the Brawly movies are really cool to me. Brawly's a good antagonist. Why not keep that? And why not allow ourselves to sit around and watch Android 18 be a badass? Right after you're done with episode 287, just go ahead and watch your son Goku and his friends return. It's only in Japanese, and I understand that this play takes place two years after the events of Majin Buu, but I don't feel anything in there kind of pushes away any idea that we have two years versus six months. It makes sense to me, and it makes for a great segue into 288, which if I'm not mistaken is the one where we finally learn that Gohan and Videl are actually getting married, which I'm not sure they are in, I'm not sure they are in the, the Yosun Goku and his friends return. So it's kind of a little bit more of their relationship and everything else. Right after episode 288, you can easily just go ahead and watch Dra Dragon Ball Super through its entirety and then go on and watch the rest of Z, since that stuff hasn't been written out of continuity yet. So yeah, uh, that's everything from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z, TV specials and movies and everything in between that I think actually fits into a particular order in continuity. You might think I'm right, you might think I'm wrong. Tell me tell me in the comment section below. Tell me the way you watch Dragon Ball Z. Do you think any of the games matter to your particular sense of continuity or not? Tell me why. The main reason I'm making this video is just to tell everyone that, you know, continuity isn't always the most important thing. As a fan, there's so much material out there to look through. There's so many interesting ideas. Look at it yourself. Have a respect for the original continuity. Understand it if you actually want to be discussing it or arguing about it. But in the end, but but at the end of the day, just kind of make it up as you go and take things that interest you and figure out a way to make them work. And if they can't in your mind, then they don't work. And I think that that makes that's basically my point. So take take that as you will and. Hopefully you'll check out more of my videos and see them in the future. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. That'd be pretty helpful. Uh, talk to y'all later. Bye.